If you need to execute a lot of tasks concurrently, you can either create one thread per task and have each thread execute that one task, or you can submit the tasks to a thread pool with a number of pre-created threads which then execute the tasks one by one. By using a thread pool, you can control how many threads are active at the same time. Each thread requires some resources allocated by the operating system, so you do not want too many threads running at the same time. This diagram here illustrates a thread pool. The thread pool has three threads allocated to it, and that means we only need thread resources allocated three times, for instance, the thread stack and other stuff. Additionally, the thread pool has an internal task queue. Here it's a blocking queue, in this case here, and in this queue all the tasks to be executed by this thread pool are inserted. Whenever a thread is available for executing a task, it will try to take a task from the blocking queue. If there are no tasks in the queue, the thread will simply wait until a task is inserted into the queue. If multiple threads are waiting for tasks, then only one of them will, of course, get the task that is inserted. So if, if there are no tasks in the queue, three threads are waiting, one task is inserted, then of course only one of the threads will get the task and execute it. By queuing tasks up into a blocking queue, you get a good distribution of work between the threads. Imagine here that thread one, which is in this example here, taking task one. Imagine that this task takes a long time to execute, so thread two here takes task two, finishes it, thread three takes task three and finishes it, then thread two might actually take task four, and thread three might take task five before thread one has finished executing its task here. So whatever task is at the head of the queue here will be executed by whatever thread is first available to execute tasks. So the tasks will not be divided among the threads equally so that you have an equal amount of tasks to each thread here. Instead, the tasks will be divided uh, among the threads according to how fast the threads can execute them. Now let's have a look at how to implement such a thread pool here in Java. And I will start by showing you how to use um, a thread pool that I have already implemented. So here we create a thread pool um, with three threads and a maximum capacity for storing 10 tasks internally. Then we loop um, 10 times here, and then I just store this i here, the index of each iteration in a task number variable, and then I call a thread pool execute with a Java Lambda expression here that is actually just an implementation of the runnable interface because this thread pool that I have implemented expects you to submit implementations of the runnable interface for them to be executed inside the thread pool. So this is a runnable implementation here as a Lambda expression. Inside the, the runnable here, the only thing that the, the task is doing, the runnable is doing, is simply print out or create a message here consisting of the name of the thread, one of these threads here that is executing the task, and the number of the task. And then that message is printed out. The main thread here that creates the thread pool then waits until all the tasks have finished, then stops the thread pool. Now let's run this example and see what is printed out. Now, as you can see here, thread two executes task with index one, 
thread zero um, executes the task with index zero and so on and so forth you can see that thread two once it finishes the, the task with index one here it continues with task three and then finally ta thread two also executes task seven now you can see there is not um, seemingly any uh, strict order in which these tasks are executed and the reason for that is not that the tasks are not taken out of the queue in the right sequence or in the same sequence as they are inserted the reason for that is that even though thread 0 or thread 1 may be the first one to take a task out thread 2 may may after that take a task out and finish executing it before thread 1 actually um, finishes executing the task that it just took out and so that is the way uh, it works here and also we do not actually know in what order the threads are waiting to take tasks out of the queue but it is also not so important the the tasks that you submit to a thread pool should not depend on what thread executes it. It should not matter which are the threads that execute that task. In fact, if we run the example again, we will probably get a different order. Now you can see thread 1, thread 2, thread 2, thread 2, thread 2, thread 2, thread 2, thread 1, 0, 2. Right? So in this example here, thread 2 executed most of the tasks. Now let's have a look at how the thread pool is implemented. Java actually comes with a built-in thread pool, so you do not have to implement your own. But in this video here, I show you how to implement your own for the sake of uh, just showing you how. And for the cases where you might need to implement your own thread pool, where the functionality provided by the built-in thread pool in Java it maybe is not sufficient. By the way, if you check out the description below this video, there is a link to a textual version of this tutorial where you can see all of this code and copy paste it a little bit more easily than from this video. Okay, so the thread pool class here is just a normal class. It's just a normal Java class. Internally, it has a blocking queue and actually it has no uh, type on it. Let me just fix that. So all the tasks submitted to this queue here has to be a runnable implementations and the runnable is a standard java interface in this um, array list here we keep a list of pool thread runnables these are also implementations of the runnable interface but they're not tasks they implement they provide the functionality that is needed by the pool threads in order to take tasks out of the queue, execute them, and then go back and take the next task, etc., until they are signaled to stop, to shut down. And here we have a flag, which basically just tells whether this threat pool here has been told to shut down or not, if it is stopped or not. This threat pool class here has a constructor which takes two parameters, the number of threats to create internally, and the maximum number of tasks that the array blocking queue that we are using to store the tasks in can hold maximally. And so the first thing the constructor does is to create this array blocking queue here and passing the capacity here, the maximum number of, of tasks as parameter to the array blocking queue constructor. The array blocking queue is a standard Java class, so you can use it in your own code as well. Uh, then the constructor loops a uh, number of threads times and for each iteration in this loop it creates a pool thread runnable and each pool thread runnable gets access to the task queue and that is done so that the pool thread runnable can take tasks out of the task queue and then each of these runnables are added to the runnables list which we created up here after that the constructor loops through all these uh, pool thread runnables, creates a new thread for each and calls start on the thread so that you now have a new thread executing 
and it's executing this runnable. And I will show you later how the code for the pull thread runnable looks. Now let's have a look at what happens when you submit a task to the thread pool. You do so via its execute method here. And as you can see, it has to be a runnable, so an implementation of the runnable interface here. And the first thing the execute method does is simply check if the thread pool is stopped. And if it is, it will throw an exception saying, oh, you cannot submit any more thread pool or tasks to this thread pool. Thread pool is stopped. And if the thread pool is not stopped, it simply enqueues the task in the task queue. That's all there is to it. Now to stop the thread or stop the thread pool here, you call the stop method. In order to do so, or in order to stop the, the thread pool, the stop method um, stores internally that it has been asked to, to shut down, to stop, so that if somebody tries to submit new tasks to the thread pool, they will get an exception. And then it will loop through all the runnables here and call the do stop method on them. And we will see in a moment how that do stop method looks. And that's about it. The way you wait until all tasks have finished is simply to um, check here if the task queue size is larger than zero inside of a while loop. And as long as the task queue size is larger than zero, then the thread here will sleep uh, one millisecond and then it will simply check again. Sooner or later, all the tasks in the, um, in the task queue will be taken out and executed and the task queue size will reach zero and this method here will then return. Now let's have a look at how the pool thread runnable class looks. As you can see, it is just a standard Java class that implements the runnable interface. So we can pass it to a thread for execution. Um, it has three member variables here. First, a thread, which is a reference to the thread that executes it. We fill it in later here. A blocking queue here, the task queue, which is the queue from which tasks are taken for execution by this pool thread runnable. And then here a flag that tells whether this pool thread runnable has been asked to stop or not. The um, pool thread runnable constructor simply takes the um, blocking queue where the tasks are stored in and stores it in the task queue member variable here. Inside the run method here, the first thing that happens is that the this pool thread runnable stores a reference to the thread that is executing this runnable. And then it enters a loop here that says that while this pool thread runnable has not been asked to stop, it will take one um, runnable out of the task queue and call run on it. And then it will loop back up here and repeat this action. So this means that as long as this pool thread runnable has not been asked to stop, it will take tasks out of the task queue and execute them. Now, the take method here is blocking. That means that if there are no tasks in the task queue, then this threat, the threat that is executing this pool thread runnable is blocked indefinitely. And so that way, in theory, it will not it cannot enter out into the loop again and then detect that it has been asked to stop. However, we have a solution for that down here. As you can see in the do stop method, the first thing we do is to record the signal internally that this pull thread runnable has been asked to shut down. And then the do stop method calls the interrupt method here on the thread that executes the, um, the pull thread runnable. And if the thread is currently blocked, uh, trying to take a task out of the task queue and the task queue is empty, well, then the thread will be interrupted and jump out of this take method. It will no longer be blocked here and it will come out here uh, into the exception clause down here because an interrupted exception will then be thrown. So it will not try to call runnable run because it will skip directly down into this section 
it will loop around and it will see that is stopped is now set to um, true and then the thread will stop the pool thread runnable will exit this while loop and then the run method will stop and the thread that executes it will stop and as you can see the is stop method the only thing it is doing is check whether this flag is true or not actually it just returns the value of it and these methods here are synchronized because um, do stop is expected to be called from a thread outside of the thread pool uh, whereas um, is stopped it called from within one of the thread pool threads and to make sure that they can see each other's values here I have simply made the methods here synchronized then we know for sure that um, the value of is stopped is synchronized correctly to main memory so that when the pool thread is checking it that it can actually see the value that was set by an external thread inside of the do stop method that is really all there is to implementing your own thread pool. Let's just go back here again and see how it was used. We created the thread pool with three threads. This uh, constructor here will then create the three threads. Actually, we just tell it how many threads to create. And we tell how many uh, tasks that are allowed to be stored inside of the thread pool. We submit 10 tasks to it through with the thread pools execute method. And then as soon as that happens, the threads internally will start taking threads uh, or taking tasks out of the blocking queue uh, where these runnables are stored internally and execute them. Then this thread here waits for all tasks to finish and then calls stop on the thread pool. And this stop will cause the thread pool here to uh, loop through all its pool thread runnables and call do stop on those. And that will cause them to store the stop signal internally interrupt in case they are waiting for tasks and then it will cause this while loop to stop to exit and then the, th the run method exits and all the threads stop that is all for this video about thread pools and how to implement a thread pool in java Remember to check out the description below the video for a link to a textual version of this tutorial so that you can see the code here and copy paste it in case you want to play with it yourself. And remember that Java comes with a built-in executor service, a thread pool. So you don't have to implement your own, but it can be fun sometimes to implement these kind of concurrent constructs yourself. You can learn a lot from that. If you like this video, hit the like button and if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel.